Uh, Michael, congratulations. Uh, you must be excited about the new role here at Adelaide. I am. I'm just getting used to these new colours. Uh, at the moment, I've been used to one set of colours for such a long period of time. So uh, to have the change, very exciting. Um, good to be involved. And I guess it's probably more my first official day. So it's been good to get over here the last couple of days with the family and just have a look around Adelaide and uh, get more familiar with the place. Well, can you run us through how it all happened? Um, well, it was, a, I guess, the first initial phone call was just, uh, you know, I spoke to Hardy. Um, had a chat to Ken um, and just being able to have a quick chat and it was more of a more of just a throw up of what are you doing and um, I said at the time I said I don't know I, I haven't really sort of thought in that headspace um, give me some time and so we did that and I think the the big thing for me was having the conversation with the family and and uh, having that chat on a Thursday night uh, and just sort of talking about, well, you know, is this the right time to get back involved in, in coaching and, and in club land? So, um, you know, I think the overwhelming thing from the family was that if it was, uh, if it was going to be and was going to happen shortly, then we'd rather it now than later. And um, so it was a very important family decision. And, and then, of course, when you weigh up uh, the club and where the club's at and what's been, been built here under Ken, it was uh, an exciting opportunity. and. Uh, a great role uh, that was presented. Um, so in the end, it became a bit of a no-brainer to get back involved and, and the club of which to be involved in. Have you got a thought of what it leads to? Or are you just putting your toe in the water again and see what happens? No, not really. Um, I've always been the, of the belief that, you know, whatever you're committing to is you're 100% involved in that. And um, look, I, I think I've sort of stated publicly that, uh, you know, I have very long-term aspirations of uh, being a coach again, but that's not my agenda here. My agenda here is to do the role exceptionally well, um, do the midfield manager's role, work with a group of young men um, that hopefully can build as the ultimate success and you know in the end uh, you know it takes a group of people to be able to come together it's one of the genuine experiences of, that I got out of uh, out of coaching was it's uh, Ken's, Ken's the main man and but he needs a great team of people around him, a great team of coaches and support staff and a great program and that takes a whole bunch of people to pull together. Um, so if I can be a part of that and contribute in some fashion, um, then you know it's good to be to be able to provide that. Do you reflect on the way this is all happening, whereby the order you've done it is player, senior coach, media, assistant coaches, way out of whack? Uh, no, not really. Um, I, I don't tend to. I don't tend to too, live too much uh, in the past, and I, I certainly don't live a hell of a lot into the future. Um, you know, we've got a what, what we've got is a great opportunity and a great role um, and, and a good club, and, and that's all that I'm sort of focused on. Um, what that has given me is uh, a wealth of experience, um, you know, across a, a lot of different areas. Um, whether I did it in the right order or the wrong order, um, for me, is not necessarily a debate, but uh, what it has given me is hopefully a skill set that I can impart on this group. How different are you, Michael, compared to when you left Brisbane? As a coach? Oh, as a coach, um, I'm fresher. <laughs> That's what 12 months off uh, gives you. And that was what I was hoping to achieve at the back end of it was uh, by choosing to step away for a little bit. It's a very, it's a huge role. It's a massive role. Uh, there's a lot of obligations and responsibilities and it's constant. We're literally talking about it on our way in here about uh, just the thing that surprised me the most in the role was just how 24 seven it is. You put your head on the pillow and you're still thinking about it. Um, um, so that constant just there all the time was uh, the biggest facet of the whole job. Uh, um, but you know, in terms of what's changed, really just fresher and just uh, keen to get involved in it and hopefully bring some of those skills to, to here and, um, and some of that work rate too that you need to have as a coach. You must have your thoughts on the, the group itself from the outside, Michael. You must be very impressed with the list that you're going to be working with. Well, again, I've only um, I've only looked at it from the outside. I haven't got into the the detail of that yet. Um, over time, I'm not necessarily going to rush out, get a chance to know the guys. So the guys go in Dubai. So I see that as a perfect opportunity to get to know the guys. Um, I'm fortunate that I have a long time ago, I must admit, um, and they were uh, just coming as young men at the time, but uh, spending some time with them at the AOS with Hamish Hartland and Brad Ebert and. Uh, Trent Grove, um, Ma uh, Matthew Broadbent. Um, so there's a few different guys that I, I spent some time with there. Um, so that'll evolve. And I'm excited about coaching that group. Um, there is a, a, a very good, exciting young group that's coming through. 
But I'm just as excited as uh, coaching the players who aren't playing AFL football as I am, who are the ones that you probably more know who are you know got their positions there right now. Ken, how do you want this to work? Do you want <coughs> Michael to adopt your philosophies, or do you want him to challenge you on yours? Or oh, he's certainly got to challenge me. Oh, he's got great experience. He just said, you know, that the journey that he's been on. We bring people to our organisation to make the organisation better. Now we're not going to. We're going to have to open our ears to what Michael's got to say. And as a coaching group, that's one thing we're really, really good at. Is we're prepared to listen to each other's ideas, and then we collectively will come together and we'll then go and coach that together. Michael will have some incredible ideas to bring to our group, and there's something that we're really looking forward to. He'll have a freshness about the way we want to play. He'll bring a freshness to that, and we'll listen. And that's really important for us. This is the second time you've had to do it in 12 months, even less than 12 months. You sense that this is going to constantly happen to you and what's the best way to deal with it? Oh, if good people get opportunities, I'm really pleased and really proud of our football club if that happens. But I just want people to come in and, and be a part of the team and work for the team. And you know, I'm, and Voss will do that. Voss will be fantastic for us. I mean, I, I sit here today and go, I wish Phil really well. I wish Richo all the best. But how excited I am now that I've got Michael Voss to come in and help my young group learn and get better and go for the next challenge. That, that's that's the exciting part for us. And if there's a little bit of little bit of pain in that, that you that you lose one or two people along the way, the exciting part is the the freshness that we get. Look, how many clubs get a three-time premiership captain, Brownlow medalists, coming and work with their group? I, I know the response I got from my current captain when I talked about Michael Voss. I just know the excitement that this football club's uh, got in it already again now. So when you lose a little bit. You've got to remember how much excitement you're going to bring in, and we brought in an enormous amount of excitement. Does it freshen you up as well? Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got a got I've got a lot of help here now. I mean, I've got a, a bloke who's coached in my seat for five years. I just said to him, to mate, how can I switch off on the way in?" As he just said, he's going to be able to be such a great sounding board for me. I'm I'm a bit older, but Michael's got great experience that that I haven't had. You know, he's done my job for three more years, and I've actually sat in this seat. So I've got things that I, I will have not seen yet. But I'm just going to lean over and say, hey, Vossi, what am I going to do here? And he's going to have experienced some of that. You know, I think it's fantastic for me. Well, you talked about that work rate required in a, a senior coaching role. Are you pretty pumped to be able to apply that but without all the sort of added responsibility that you yeah. have to deal with? Yeah, I must that's part of the exciting uh, facet. Um, and we talked about previous experience. Uh, look, the one thing I did get out of the, the recruit um, by uh, going there was at 12 players and uh, there was nothing else except coaching those 12 players um, and how to get them from, in nine, 10 weeks, get them from not being an AFL player, but to get them to AFL standard and, and draftable standard. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, so to be able to have a group like that, that Josh Carr and I will be working with, um, is, is really exciting because you get to spend the time with them. Um, and one of the jobs, um, good or bad, is the fact that you have a lot of other those obligations that go with it. Um, but you know, sometimes the pure coaching hands-on um, is in time you get to spend with the players. Um, you, you know, you can lose. And whereas uh, within this role, that's pretty much my entire role. So, um, so I'm looking forward to getting back to teaching those interests about midfield. Um, and and that's where I th hopefully can give some benefit to this group is uh, having played in that position. And that being my spot for the entire end of my career is is starting to, I guess, put some of those characteristics into this group. Was there ever a consideration to apply for any of the vacant head coaching roles, Michael? No. Was this always, once you spoke to Sean, this was the one? Um, look, I think one of the things that, you know, going through it, I, I quite literally uh, say that I had not thought about getting into uh, coaching until I'd received that phone call. Um, it was, uh, and that's why it probably took a while to get my head around it because I was going in a completely different direction. Um, not for any reason, it was just the way that I wanted it to be because I felt that was the best way to freshen up. Uh, so once this came uh, as an opportunity, I considered that as, as, as the opportunity and, and, and saw it through and as I sit here today. Did you think of holding back just in case Gold Coast rang or no. something else? As no. soon as this one came up, it was... Um, no, the, the, the first thing for me was that this was was getting back into Clubland the, what I wanted to do. That was the first thing. Um, and that took a little bit of time to get my head around. Um, not an absorbing amount of time, but certainly a little bit of time. Um, but then, you know, I, I don't think there was ever going to be a question in terms of 
um, as I said to Ken when I talked to him, it's not a question about the club and um, direction of the club and the role that you got. That's all exceptionally exciting. And in fact, it's probably the reason why I'm considering it. Um, in fact, the only reason why I'm considering it because of that reason. So um, to get back in was a very big decision. It's also a big decision for my family because it's, uh, you know, we talk about, um, you know, how long is this for? Well, you know, I've got a young family. They've got to go through school. It's very important for me that I create in my own environment the stability for them. Um, so this is a long-term decision for us, uh, a very important long-term decision. And um, and also to build those great clubs that we've come to see over the last uh, few years in, you know, the Essendon, uh, sorry, the, the um, Geelong and Hawthorne and, um, and Sydney, they've been able to do it over such a long period of time. And, you know, I don't think I'm stretching it too much to say that I think uh, Port Adelaide's trying to come that, become that football club. So you need a bunch of good people to be able to do that. You get instantly measured by what happened at Brisbane. Is that a scar or an asset to you? Um, Oh, I hope it's an asset. I really do, yeah. Was the, way you, was the way you left there part of the reason why you were a bit hesitant about coming back into Ah, no, not at all. No, not at all. It's, it's, uh, um, it's, it's just part of my DNA. It's just, you know, where being involved um, in what I did last was, was great. Um, I would have liked to have considered it for another, another season. Uh, it was heading that way. But then, you know, it's the, it, it sort of sits as a competitor. It's just that hole in the belly that never fills up. And we just continue to try and find how do we fill it. Um, and we keep, keep searching for it. So this is, uh, this is the way I'm going to go about it. And, uh, and I love the fact that you walk away from a game feeling good or feeling bad. And I enjoy the challenge that when it works for you, you get that high at for such a small period of time. And then you lock in and focus and get the next challenge done. Um, and when, you, when you're in the midst of that, you, um, you sometimes think, geez, it'd be nice not to have it. Um, and then when you don't have it, you can't wait to get it back. And so for me, I can't wait to get it back. I can't wait to get it, be able to get stuck into pre-season and, uh, and then obviously the next season uh, for Port Ello. Is family as excited as you are? Are they they're fully on board? Are they taking any convincing? Uh, no, they're very good, they're very outstanding actually. Um, and they've always been exceptionally supportive, so very supportive. You mentioned at the start of this year, Michael, that you were enjoying that time back with your family and, you know, I guess reconnecting a bit. You spoke about, you know, being able to go and see their sport and that sort of thing. Like, you sort of worried that, you know, it might be a bit much to, you know, really step back into a role like this and you were sort of miss out on all of those things? No, not really. Um, yeah, that, that's, I think that you sort of learn all those things as you go, but no, I'm not. I mean, I, I, was, uh, I step back in this... Uh, into this role with absolute 100% support from the family and uh, uh, and very excited about the challenge that's ahead for my family and, and for Port Adelaide and, and what we've got ahead of us. So Thanks, how, guys. how hard do you think it's going to be when you're out there? Because you have been in the top job when you're coaching these boys. How hard do you think it's going to be to step back and let him do his thing and Quite easily, <laughs> um, but I mean, look, I, I hope to be of some support to Ken in some ways, um, and 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 think a little bit like a head coach and provide different scenarios. And I'm sure that'll be debated really strongly. In fact, I'd be disappointed if it wasn't, um, because uh, for one thing, I've uh, learned about Ken and, and the message that I've heard uh, for the time is is complete honesty. And, and that's absolutely 100% in line with me. Um, so for me, being able to work with a group of men and uh, really sort of get in into the nitty gritty of things uh, is exceptionally exciting for me. Um, and I would hope that Ken's got me here because he wants to be challenged. In fact, I know he's got me here because he wants to be challenged. Ken, you just fill out that bit when you said about the response you got from Travis Bank, just to enlighten us a bit as to what that meant to him. Oh, you can just imagine what what a young midfielder would be thinking when you're telling him he's going to work with, a, as I said, a three-time premiership captain and a Brownlow medalist, the, the best player in his position in his time. I mean, I, I, I looked at Vossi from, a, from afar as a, uh, as, a, as a pure watcher of football and thought, this is, this, is, this is a great player. This is an outstanding player of all time. And you go, well, why wouldn't Travis Boak, Brad Ebert, Hamish Hartlett, Ollie Wines, you know, they, they connect. They actually connect, you know, which is not not that easy to do. But when you've got when you've got the history that Michael's got, they connect. 
you know, and, and they know he's going to add to them. And, and you know what? They just want to get better every day. They turn up at this footy club and they know that Michael Voss is going to make them better. You know he's got the Midas touch. You might have that job earlier than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Not here for that. <laughs>